everyone! For this week's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Motoko Kusanagi Figma from Ghost in the Shell, and she is the standalone complex version. So as always, we are going to start with the box. The box has a pretty standard Figma look to it. Uh, Motoko's color scheme is purple and black, which suits her character just fine. Right here on the front, we see Kusanagi Motoko, SAC version for standalone complex as well as the title of the series over here, and there is a 25th anniversary Ghost in the Shell um, emblem right there, which I can't believe it's been 25 years since the original movie came out. But yeah, um, inside the box is just a purple viewing window, um, and as well as a cardboard cutout, I guess, to have with the figure if you want. And this is what the top of the box looks like. The box features lots of pictures of the Motoko Figma and the different poses you can have her in. Here is one of my favorite where she's ready to kick some ass. And she is Figma number 237. And the back of the box features some more poses that you can have with her. As well as the uh, typical information that is to be found on figure boxes. And the bottom features one more picture of Motoko. So without further ado, let's take a look at what she comes with. So, of course, she comes with a set of instructions, one side English and the other side Japanese, with all the different parts that she comes with and what you can do with her. And she has, I guess, the standard Figma stand. Um, I don't have too many Figmas, so I can't attest to how usual this looks, but this sort of has a frosted look over this one. And another nice thing is the little sandwich baggie of sorts for the accessory parts if you need. As well as an extra black um, joint piece. So Motoko doesn't come with too many accessories unfortunately, but those that she does come with are great. Um, first being her handgun. Um, it is nicely sculpted, but a relatively simple finish to it. And of course the bigger gun, and I already attached this piece at the tip right here. Another nicely sculpted dumb piece. And of course she comes with this set of alternate hands. Uh, Figma always seems to give you plenty of options and hand choices with their figures, I notice. But there are various um, poses with these, and they are simple and nicely done, but when you flip it over, you notice a little bit more sloppiness in the paint. Um, some of the hands it won't matter because they're meant to hold her weapon, so it's not really that you're going to notice these uh, mistakes so much. She also comes with an alternate hair piece. This one is more of a windswept um, action type of look to her. And she comes with two optional faceplates. This first one being more of an angry, in the midst of battle shouting type of face. And the next one is more of a gentle, softer expression to her. These are very small pieces, but very, very nicely detailed and painted. Um, of note, Motoko does come with one more piece, and that is another set of opai. I guess to do uh, more of her really action-oriented poses in which she's holding her gun with both hands or something like that. And finally here is the Motoko Figma herself. Um, as is the case with most Figmas, especially the action-oriented kind, she has a lot of articulation to her. Her head can move, her shoulders can move, elbows have movement, her hands have a little bit her upper torso, she has some movement under her opai especially, and her waist, of course her legs and her knees, and her feet. And what I really like with the feet is that even, I don't know if you can see that, but the tips, her toes actually can move a little bit as well, which is a really cool feature. But anyways, let's take a look at the details of this figure. So the outfit Motoko is wearing is from season one of the show. Uh, everything looks pretty nicely done. I like the little bit of detail on her combat boots. Um, her pants have a shinier finish than the top piece right here. But where I'm really noticing this shiny finish is the little crop jacket that she's wearing. So it really does look as though she is wearing a leather jacket, which is a really nice touch. I really like that they included the detail of the little portholes in the back of her neck as well. 
as is the case with the other face plates, the detail on her face is very nicely done. I like the natural stern expression that she has, which perfectly suits her character. Her hair is nicely painted and sculpted as well. However, I will say that the um, bang piece right here is quite fragile, so be careful to not bump that too much when posing her. So while not packed with a ton of accessories, this is still a really fun Figma and she has a lot of possibilities. I do recommend you pick her up if you are a Ghost in the Shell fan. Um, it is really nice to see another Ghost in the Shell figure after all this time. It would be really nice too if we can get Figmas maybe of the other Section 9 team members as well so she's not alone here. But yeah, definitely recommend this Figma. Um, until next time, thanks for watching.